On October 21st, 2010, Professor Maxwell J. Melman of the Case Western University School of Law presented a 40-minute speech at Mercier's College's Mercy Heritage Room. During his discussion, titled, Can Humans Survive Evolutionary Engineering?, Melman spoke of the ethical and legal issues posed by genetics, robotics, nanotechnology, and information technology. Listen now for excerpts from his presentation. Um, uh, because in addition to the revolution in human genetics, we are also in the midst of the revolution in, in computing. And I like to think of it as if uh, uh, humans had invented fire and the wheel within the same half century. I mean, that transformative. And so you have to think of them working together to basically propel us into a, uh, into a series of uh, scientific possibilities and ethical and policy uh, 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 problems and conundrums. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, some see our gradual mastery of uh, genetic engineering, the ability to actually alter uh, human and animal genes, uh, as a way to turn the tables on what Richard Dawkins called in his book, The Selfish Gene. Um, Dawkins uh, said, we are built as gene machines, but we have the power to turn against our creators. And Julian Savalescu, who is a transhumanist at Oxford University, uh, said, humanity until this point has been a story of evolution for the survival of genes. Now we are entering a new phase of human evolution, evolution under reason, where human beings are masters of their destiny and power has been transferred from nature to science. Uh, the transhumanists, which is the name that actually Julian Huxley, Aldous's brother, came up with in 1957 to describe uh, the vision of a sort of transformed human future, the transhumanists have a, a, a specific uh, vision, and it's actually, uh, 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 it's, it's actually very close to the core uh, uh, principles of most world religions. That is, their ultimate objective is actually immortality. It's actually immortal youth. Um, and in a, in a very blessed state of, of, of pure health, complete health, and uh, of, uh, possibilities for intellectual and artistic attainments because of all of the advances that, that they expect to be made. One of them, Nick Bostrom, also at Oxford, says that, the current hu uh, that current human nature is improvable through the use of applied science and other rational methods, which may make it possible to increase human health span, extend our intellectual and physical capacities, and give us increased control over our own mental states and moods. To transhumanists like Nick Bostrom, a directed evolution, the idea of, of, of grabbing control of the, of the evolutionary process, is the apotheosis of the human species. Gregory Stock, professor at UCLA, announces that humanity is leaving its childhood and moving into its adolescence as its powers infuse into realms hitherto beyond our reach. Well, how close are we to being able to actually engineer our own evolution? Well, we've made quite a lot of strides with regard to plants. The U.S. Grocery Manufacturers Association estimates that 70% of all the food sold in the United States contains ingredients from genetically modified crops. 70%. Um, animals, with animals, we have uh, uh, historically used a, a fairly crude form of genetic uh, engineering, that is breeding, um, to create hybrids. This is the Belgian blue, which is a, uh, uh, the pro predominant cow in much of Europe now. Um, pretty strange looking. Um, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a, uh, a substance called myostatin, which um, uh, they have managed to block the production of in these cows. As a result, they're, they're, they're very muscled, and muscle is meat, so they're very uh, uh, desirable as, as uh, food cattle. Um, there's also been uh, uh, this, this uh, animal, this is the Enviro pig. Uh, genetic, uh, active genetic manipulation of this animal's genes uh, allow it to digest 90, uh, 90 to 100 percent of the phosphorus in its diet compared to only 50 percent for normal pigs. That means that much less phosphorus is being deposited at the other end of the pig and thereby causing pollution when it washes into our streams and rivers and lakes.